Why did I stay with my shitty ex? Am I in a toxic relationship? How am I going to move on and find love? We're your hosts, Izzy and Meredith. And welcome to x Facts: Relationships and Breakups. Relationships are confusing. When they end, we're left picking up the pieces and wondering what went wrong. So, each episode on x Facts, we'll hear stories from real people sharing their experiences in relationships. We'll also hear from experts to help us uncover the deeper meaning behind our actions and emotions. At the end of every episode, we'll answer a listener's question. No topic is off limits, so ask us anything you want to know. From conflict and healing to dating and love, x Facts will take you on a mind-blowing journey to explore all aspects of our amazing, imperfect, frustrating relationships. Okay. So, hi everyone, welcome to x Facts Relationships and Breakups, where your host, Izzy and Meredith, and I'm really excited for today's episode. So, here it is. Here it is. Uh, today's guest is Chef Tyler Anderson. You may remember him from such things as Top Chef season 15. Uh, he also owns Mill Rights if you're local to the Hartford area of Connecticut. Some other shit too. I don't know. Whatever, whatever. D-list celebrity, very important. Everyone respect him. Uh, so... We're having him on the podcast today because Tyler and I first bonded over simultaneously going through what we both thought were very amicable divorces. However, twist, new development, we just learned that his ex had cheated, which he, I'll let you tell it, but he was suspicious of, but it's recently been confirmed. Like, what are you feeling? What's happening? How is it going? Tell us everything. Well, I mean, it sucks, you know, like, but it, I don't, <laughs> right. but I, but I don't care. I don't care. You know, like, um, that, I guess that's a strange thing to say. It sucks, but I don't care. You know what? I would have rather that things were amicable because I would, I would have liked to, to have kept her as a friend. Mm-hmm. Right. And yeah. so like, she was truly like one of my best friends, if not my best friend, yeah. like for a, for a section of life. And it, it, like I'd already gotten past the fact that we were like done, whatever, but now like I can't be friends with her, you know, like now it won't be amicable and that sucks and it sucks because we have a daughter and you know, like whatever, that, that's the shitty part. Um, but it's not like full sting, you know, it's not full sting mode. Right. You were already right. like mentally sort of detached. Yeah. yeah. Which is probably for the best. So what, yeah. um, what did you suspect exactly? Like, how did you... Well, I mean, I suspect like, you know, because she was sort of guiding the ship on the separation. She was definitely guiding the ship. I would say like, I think I said it was like 70% her, 30% me. Um, but she was good. She, it was her idea. And when that sort of like comes out of nowhere, it's like, hmm. Mm, and, yeah. mm-hmm. and, and she's like, she's not at all like a hoe. Like mm-hmm. she's not a hoe. <laughs> she's not. Um, so... But like during COVID, you know, I was very busy and then you get tired and you get fat and you get old and you get sleepy. And, you know, I wasn't like probably the best husband ever. My drinking went up, my use of cannabis went up and I wasn't as effective, you know? And so I'm sure, you know, finding love in the arms of another person just happens sometimes. Like, fuck it. Are you like loosely admitting a modicum of fault right now? Because I 100% coming for you. Oh. I think that okay. I think that I'm at fault for a lot of it, mm-hmm. to be honest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I don't think and I don't think that I don't think that the reason that we're no longer together is solely because she found somebody else that did that. I think like I think that we slowly sort of like fell into this rut. Mm-hmm. and then well, the yeah it's like the boring. chicken or the egg yeah so like what caused her to even have the thought to do that not saying right. it's your fault but no part of it is part of it is sure. you know like I, I wasn't a t- I wasn't attentive you know it's like it is what it is like I was almost I was like over 300 pounds there were a lot of there were a lot of things it was like lazy do you really shit. think your weight had that much to do with it I would hope <laughs> like you know like re- like really if you, if you if you marry someone and you know like if you marry someone and they How turn into a fucking how much did you weigh when slob, you guys got married and then what was like 230 right uh-huh. like it was like 75 pounds more wow is that all COVID? you know 
the, yeah, I got fat as fuck with COVID. You know, like, but it was, it was gradual, but like COVID really boosted it. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I get that, trust me. Yeah. yeah, it's a struggle. Every day it's a struggle. It's a oh struggle. yeah, you're, yeah, you're, looking, you're looking really thick over there. <laughs> you don't know. Everyone knows themselves best. Also, I hate when people like negate people who are generally not obese is like weight plight because like they have their insecurities too like just because someone else is larger doesn't mean that like we don't struggle oh yeah for sure i mean fuck you tyler (laughs) weight loss is difficult i mean i got yeah we could we could go on a whole segment about that i know (laughs) i used to work out every day i haven't worked out in like 70 years i know i can only i look very great when i like and sad no sad helps but sad also now sad used to help a lot i'm the opposite when i'm sad i'm like (laughs) oh no for me when i'm stressed i don't eat as much but now like i know myself more so i'm like oh i'm stressed i need to eat so i don't get hungry (laughs) again the opposite when i'm stressed i'm like something please distract me from my life i hate it yeah anyways back to tyler (laughs) i'll just be over here uh do you think that the fact that you're a d-list celebrity and sometimes when you go out locally people like stop to force you to talk to them and like you get a lot of attention people are interested in what you're doing like basically you're I assume you were the more high profile person in the relationship do you think that had anything to do with your disillusion yeah I mean definitely she said it did uh, and I understand why like I think she was tired of being Tyler Anderson's wife, right. you know, that, that sucks. And like, you know, she's a sharp girl. Like she's, she's not like, she's, she's got not her own just shit. like, yeah, she's got her own shit. She's yeah. a badass in her own way. Yeah. And I completely understand like why that would be like frustrating, but also like, that's not my fucking fault. No, like, no. You right. should never I, apologize for your own success. I garnished like some level of, of notoriety for working my ass off. Yeah. You know, like well, that's that's when how it happened. First got together though, was it like that or did it grow? No, into she that? like, but she likes, you know, they like it at first. Yeah. Right. I say they. Uh, <laughs> but she, All of the ladies that I've ever yeah. had. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the, that's a huge. So were you place. already like who you are today when you, you know, you know, noticed and, you know, when you first got together? together? Yeah. When you first got um, together, was it different then? It was different, but it's like also like been, you know, I mean, it's been like almost nine years. So in nine years, things happened. So it was like a little sure. more, but it was still like I was on I was on the same trajectory. Mm-hmm. Like trajectory. I owned I owned like a rad restaurant, like yeah. one of the best restaurants in the state. I'd owned it for four years when I met her. You know, it was like things were going to I'd been on TV a couple times already. Yeah. I mean, it was like already there. When you go on Top Chef, it kind of like blows things up a little bit. Yeah. Um, how, did, so, how does that happen? I'm kind of curious. <laughs> how did uh, you know. get on Top Chef? Of all people. No, no, uh, not that. I mean, no, I know. That, that was my process. Process. Like, you, like, you were being yeah. Yeah. Meredith <laughs> Meredith hated me on Top Chef. So I did. Lets, you came on. She always a lets total me know. Dildo. She always lets me know what a dick I was. <laughs> <laughs> um they just they reached out to me like i'm i'm not like i'm not looking to be famous i'm looking to have my restaurants do well and Mm -hmm. if something comes my way that can like help do that and i can be myself in the meanwhile uh in the meantime like i'll do it so they came to me and i interviewed a bunch of times like shit loads of times Mm -hmm. then they had me on then i went how did they come to you did they like what do you what put you on their radar because there's the James Beard Awards, which are like mm-hmm. the, they're like the Oscars of our business. I know what um, the James Beard Awards are. Yeah. I don't, so. Congratulations. Oh, okay, sorry. She I smart guess, ass. <laughs> I guess I'll let you explain it. So there, there are Oscars. Mm-hmm. And so I've been nominated like a lot of times, but I never win. Mm-hmm. Um, so they, they look at that list. They look at your Instagram. They look at the quality of your restaurant. They want people from different parts of the country. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, diversity is key. There was a very diverse crew. So how do you factor into that? Uh, because I'm the fat white dude. Hello. Oh, <laughs> so it's a weight thing. Yeah, it's all weight. You it's also weight have glasses. <laughs> uh, 
No, but I, yeah, I mean, I, I guess there's lots of things they look for, but it, the process is a pain in the ass, but like I never chased it, right? Like they have open right. roll call, like open calls for Top Chef mm -hmm. in like 10 cities every year. And I think they said at the New York one, there were 15,000 people or wow. some, no, 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 1,500 people, which wow, is a lot, like, like right? one city. <laughs> it is, a lot. It's like, it's like 10 times less than yeah. the other number. Um, yeah. <laughs> still, still a shitload of people who like just show up and like are begging to be on TV. Right. But, like Top Chef isn't, about, isn't really about making stories um, as much as some of the other shows. So mm -hmm. They're looking it does for, help if you're like Miss Congeniality, aka Instaflam. Yeah, he's pretty too. <laughs> we love a good story arc on reality television. I know, right? <laughs> um, so, Anyways, back to relationships. <laughs> so, um, obviously, I know you say you, um, you know, it, it was easy enough getting uh, realizing that you were cheated on, but like I'm sure I had to bring up a bunch of emotions. You know, I'm gonna like I'm gonna also I'm just gonna backtrack on the cheated on thing mm -hmm. because like some timeline things have happened and I think more than anything she found love in the arms of another oh, and like wow. maybe that's you know like she found somebody else like yeah. she found somebody else that's and that is what it is all of you to reframe that by the way I mean, it, you know, last time we spoke, I think I was, it was a little more You're fresh. You a little buffer, and, yeah. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah. now I've had some time to regurgitate it and like, mm. it, or, or regurgitate it. I've had time to regurgitate <laughs> it. That's good. See yeah. that chef talk? I'm super educated. All um, about food and bodily functions. Yeah. <laughs> Cows. Cheated on is a big thing. Like, I certainly do feel like there were things done that shouldn't have been done while we were right. in a relationship. Disrespectful, however. But I think I think it was part of the reason she ended the relationship and she was just mm -hmm. too big of a chicken shit to tell me, you know? Didn't she try to get back with you at one point? How do you explain that? I mean, there have been, there, of course, like, in a dissolution of this, like, uh, uh, like this, there are always, like, sparks of emotion that fly yeah, back up. For sure. And you know, like it's certainly happened from my side and it certainly happened from hers. And it's just like, I don't know how to explain it. Listen, I, she'll want me back. There's no doubt about it, but like, yeah. it's not happening. Like it's, you know, it's not happening. I think that's a common like relationship thing when you first break up with someone, like mm -hmm. first you feel good about it, mm -hmm. but then like the art of the backslide comes into play oh, at yeah. some point. And I yeah. feel like most people go through that. They're like, did I do the right thing? I missed yeah. my... And then it's like very hard to not tempt fate by getting back together. I know. You just have gotta you, push through. Have you ever gone back together with an ex or? Um, no, but I did try. So again, I have like three exes. One of them was my high school boyfriend, mm -hmm. which is the one I'm gonna tell the story about. And it doesn't even fucking count, who cares? But uh, so we dated for like a year. I became emotionally dipped out and I guess technically low-key cheated like one time and then the next day I was like I need to do the right thing and break it off so like I initi initiated the breakup but then like a couple months later I was like you know I have nothing else going on let's get back to it but he had already started seeing someone else so that at that point like he rejected me which like not used to not great for my feet <laughs> but like totally for the best and we wondered because I was about to go to college we were mm -hmm. in, you know so it's a whole thing but yeah I have for sure succumbed to that thought and even like in my current like divorce situation there's been a lot of times I think when both of us are like are we sure we should be doing it but then we're like yeah no we're sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, no, that's difficult. I mean, yeah, I've had those feelings definitely. I've definitely broken up with people and then gotten back together with them. A lot of people do that. I've never done it, but I've only had like three exes in my yeah. life and two of them were from high school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um yeah. So Ty Ty, what are you what are you up to? Ty Ty, that's what my that's what my doorman calls me at the apartment building I live in now. He's well, like, I was I was leaving last night. He's a smart man. Like, Luther. Yeah, he's like, he's like, have a good night, Ty Ty. And I'm like, what the fuck? He's like, <laughs> <laughs> he's like this like old G. Wave. 
like this Aww. old Hartford gangsters, like cool, cool ass motherfucker. He's like calling me tight time. Like, All right, beauty. like I'll get I down like with the that. Juxtaposition. Yeah, no, it I, is. I was actually wondering. Um, so I understand that, like when have when you have a kid, everything gets a lot more you know real in a relationship complicated. and complicated when you break mm-hmm. up. So how do you feel with her having someone else and? you guys having a kid together how does mm-hmm. that feel yeah uh i mean that's not lovely but i i don't think like she's been violet hasn't been violet hasn't met this person or okay. been around this person or anything like that because otherwise there would be a different level of let's have a talk about this yeah, yeah, um yeah, yeah. so Do you it's think, not, right, first of all are they still together um i don't know like, I don't, I don't well, care I was going to say, if it comes to that, though, like, if they're still together and one day, you know, obviously she's going to want to introduce him to her. Like, yeah. what are your thoughts uh, about that? I mean, it is what it is. If they're still together, then it, it was like, what, then it worked. Like, good for them. Congratulations. Yeah. I don't give a shit either way, really. Um, <laughs> I feel you know, like, I I'm, feel like. I'm done with it. So it's like, uh, it, like, if they're still together in like a year, I would expect that she would meet this person. Like, she should. Me. But do you like, have any concerns about like his interactions with your child or like what he might teach her or like influence her with? I have I have no concerns about anything that that man could ever do to me or my family. Um, Box. Box. I like it. <laughs> I'm not even gonna I'm not touching that one. <laughs> I, I think I think he's absolutely scared shitless as well he should be. And I think that he will forever step the right way as it relates to me and my people. Or he'll sleep with the fishes. Read <laughs> your mouth, not mine. <laughs> no, I feel you. I mean, I know um, from a couple of people that I've known, you know, when you have kids, it gets, you know, it gets yeah. really complicated yeah. with, um, you know, also just the question of knowing when to introduce them to a significant other, because yeah. that's a difficult timing kind of thing. I mean, obviously you don't want to do it right away, yeah. but you know. Well, it, right. and if like my ex and I had a child, which thank God we don't, uh, maybe the impetus for our split, <laughs> uh, I, I feel like I would get very territorial. Like even if she was like a lovely person, which of course she would be because he's lovely. Like regardless, I think it would be like, who is this person? What is she teaching my child? Like, I don't know. I feel like that would be a really hard pill to swallow. Yeah. I mean, I think it, I think it is, but I like, I, I had this happen before once, and so I've done That's it before. That's true, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. But like you said, like, she's not a shitbag. Right. She's, she's not, she's not going to bring it. human. Yeah, yeah, she's a good person. She's not like, there's, there's like, she's great. She um, won't bring she, a fucker no, around you. No, yeah. she's not. She's well, not. And I trust, nice I trust that, you, that. Yeah, and that's nice. Yeah, I mean, also, trusting like, someone like in a relationship is a lot different than like trusting them as a mom or a dad too. Right. Yeah. You know right. what I mean? Like there, there, there can be that separation where like you might not just get along or like yeah. like you said, you know, shit just didn't work out. You know, you were busy yeah. blah blah blah, but like she can still be a good mom. You know? Yeah, and I'll tell you this: like if she had played it the right, like okay, so if if she whatever, if this things don't work out with this guy, she's obviously going to have a relationship in the future, and like I will have no problem with that yeah. person. Right. Yeah, I have a right. problem with this person. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. like, listen, I'm gonna be like, hey, you know, you know, like I'll I'll be Let's cordial. Yeah, you know, I'll be Let's like it up. Yeah. Cool. You know, well, and you don't have to answer this, but did you know said person ahead of time? Yep. Yeah. See, I think that he was our he was our mortgage sicker. guy. Yeah. Scott that Scott C's, it- Scott Czlack is his name. <laughs> I he's, a fucking, shit on it. he's a fucking <laughs> punk <laughs> no 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 what if that happens and then he kills himself i i right now resign responsibility for any of that <laughs> do not shit on him it's yeah. not my fault no but i mean that's, i don't that's have liability shit, though, you know? yeah no like, okay. i think that's way worse yeah you. but also that is how like relationships form right like out of acquaintance or friendship so it's like understandable but it's just I'm sure it like it's, twists but the to night. me as a girl like you know having Vegeta on and stuff like that it's um 
it's a lot, it burns a lot more when you know the person. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whereas if it's like some, you know, whatever. That they met on the like, phone. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, okay, but if it's like, if they knew me, then it's like, yo. Right. It's like you knew me, you know? However, though, I feel like a lot of people take the blame out on the person who their significant other cheated with yeah. rather than the actual person, which I do not agree with. I don't agree with that either. Everybody but that just what, wants to get their dick wet. That's where the difference is, where like yeah. if you knew them, like say they were like your friend. Right. Then no, it's then, like, it's, then it's like, yeah, then, it's like then it's your fault too. <laughs> no, <laughs> for sure. You knew me for and sure. them together, but whether but it's different when like, you know, they didn't know anything. Yeah. And it's like the person could have been lying to yeah. them. And then it's like, you know, then it's then it's all bad. Then it's like, in my opinion, and that's all that. I think it's misplaced blame. Like no, no, ultimately, no. you're upset like, with your partner. No, when when you when they didn't know you, oh as yeah, a couple. Then it's all your partner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But When the person knew sure, you, then it's equal. That's fault. kind of then it's like it's more of like okay, yeah, equal. Fault. Well, I guess it depends on like how well they knew you, but also like, okay, I'm gonna get stupid right now there's a film called the last kiss starring mm-hmm. zach Braff. it's one of those movies he made like a delicious soundtrack to back in like the 2000s and it's about like cheating and redemption and all that mm-hmm. and how complicated it is and it's like i don't think it makes sense to blame the other person necessarily because a lot of the time they're infatuated with your significant other and they're just acting like on their behalf and their feelings and like sure it's shitty knowing that that person is with someone else but like you have to look at it from their perspective like they're maybe yeah, in love I mean, yeah I mean, and I mean, they're I mean, just I mean, like if you'll sleep with me you're more I, mean, I, get that, but I just think that it's different when they know you. Well, you know yeah, I mean? for sure. like I think that for it's sure. different when they know you as a person it's not like okay, like, I, you know, I don't condone having sex with, like, a married person, but, like, you know, I'm not going to say that it's, like, say that person had sex with my husband. I don't even have a husband. I don't think that that, it's that person's fault, but, like, I think that if they knew you, then they share part of the Sure, sure they've sure. seen the relationship. Yeah, no, out, I get like, it. I'm just, just saying, though, like, if it's a loose connection and they want to yeah. get their dick wet, like, it's not really their fault. <laughs> It's not their fault. It's not their fault, but like it doesn't mean that they won't be that there won't be anger directed their way from the other person. To do for sure, like if you were a good person, you probably wouldn't. I'm just saying, like I feel like people often bear the brunt of the blame on the wrong human. Oh yeah, and I've had that before too. Yeah, I've been one time. I was hooking up with this guy, and then. His his girlfriend, who I didn't even know he had a girlfriend, was like, oh, yeah, yeah. and he was like, yo, check your man. Like, you know? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I was like, I don't want drama. I'm out. No, but that's like, the thing, though. She like, was mad at him, him, but she was yeah. taking it up. Yeah. And I don't think that's true. I'm just saying, if you knew him. Yeah. Then, no, 100%. 100%. Okay. So. So what's like next for you? Like, are you out on the prowl? Are we hitting the town? Are we on like, swipe what's the right way to swipe swipe left tinder left oh, is yeah. good i think no i think left swipe right left. right is good i don't swipe know right it's before good. my time i'll <laughs> swipe never do that but swipe. are you doing that? um no i be, i mean i have always kind of been out on the town i'm mm-hmm. i'm you know like i was i've never been one who was like, like i wasn't on lockdown when i was married you know like so well, I'm, it's part right. of your job too yeah so I like still I go out still with uh, maybe a little more frequently than I used to. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, like I like to I like to hang out with women, um, but it's like I'm not the. So I went from being getting divorced to a week later, um, a week later meeting Melanie, and so I'm not going to do that again. Right, um, right. I want to be in a relationship again someday, but this is not the day. You know, like a um, committed monogamous relationship you know what like monogamy is a tough word for me right now and i don't know if it's because of where i am but i know for a fact that both of my relationships that i was madly in love and were very passionate relationships started to fizzle and if those could start to fizzle then it means everyone starts to fizzle and i mm-hmm. think that uh that just happens and i think that there something happens with monogamy when you're 
sort of locked into this thing and you have no other options that it domesticates you in the way and makes your life boring. Yeah. And I'm not saying like, I'm, I'm not, like I have a pineapple tattooed on my hand, but it's not because I'm a swinger. It's because I'm in hospitality. Uh, but I think that uh, I, know, I see, I you. <laughs> it's true. Well, not yet. I don't it even may, know like, that's what pineapples mean. You're a mean yeah. guy. What do you have with a pineapple on yourself? That makes no sense. To Why me. do I have that? Yeah. It's a symbol for hospitality. So in Newport, Rhode Island, when a captain used to come back from a trip to the Caribbean, he would bring a pineapple. He would oh. put it on a stake in front of his house. And that man come in, eat, drink, hear my stories. Oh, okay. That's why our that's why our bar is called Bar Pina. But now like on TikTok, the upside down upside down pineapples, the swingers thing. Right. So now I'll be like, I'll be at a bar like this, and like some some like old oh cat lady, <laughs> some old some old, like a larger lady will come up and be like, so you're in the lifestyle? Like, oh my uh, God. Like you see I my seven. If you were <laughs> you see my seven year old daughter sitting right here. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. No, it's just unique, you know. Yeah. Um, so wh what I'm saying is like I don't believe in I don't believe in traditional marriage anymore. I don't believe in like tr truly traditional re uh, relationships. Well, and especially for you personally, it seems like it has not panned out. It hasn't. I think it um, can work, but it takes like a very, very special situation. It takes something it that will remain that keeps on feeling fresh, and that's really yes. difficult to do. Well, you know, like, to maintain over the long term, you know. I read a where I studied like a marriage and family therapy class in college, and there's a whole like line of research about how if when you first meet your partner, there is that spark and like intimate, like connection, like physical, you know, fireworks, even though that stuff fades over time, if you're able to look back on that, like that bad. helps you like reignite oh, the flame. Sweet. Yeah. But again, like, it's not, I think everyone is just like, depends on your temperament, like, what you're looking for, what you want, what you can tolerate too, because like not being in a monogamous relationship, but having feelings for someone is hard, mm -hmm. you know, and it comes with its own bag of fucking shit. Oh yeah. No, it's hard for at least one person not to have feelings. And, yeah. yeah. I've watched a lot of ID. <laughs> story sense. well and even like I think I said this before but like I don't want to be in a mon monogamous relationship like I don't you know and I'm totally cool with whoever I'm seeing to go off and do whatever but like sometimes when you hear about it like it does I'm not a, like a jealous person but it does affect you and it's like that low-key like upsets me a little bit and it's like in theory, I would like them to go do whatever, and I would like to be able to do whatever for me, but like, yeah, I just it's, don't want to have to it's difficult. hear like, about I, it. I personally have felt that way about some of my exes, but like, that's when I didn't have the, in my opinion, I didn't have the level of feelings that, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, it's different when you're fully invested versus when you're kind of like, you know, that's my take maybe I just don't like anyone enough to care if they fuck around <laughs> I mean yeah I that's that's how kind of I feel about it you know hmm. so. Tyler thoughts yeah I mean I, you, you know I, I don't know because I don't know what I want you know like mm -hmm. I don't I haven't like I haven't decided that this it's is what I want or that's just, it, yeah yeah and yeah. it's gonna be a case-by-case -case basis anyway like I'm very straightforward with anyone I see these days and I don't mm -hmm. I don't like I'm not out like slaying or anything but I'm like <laughs> people know like except for the you know, like yeah that you know when I'm approached by, <laughs> when I'm approached by those key, <laughs> key swap people you know things get a little tempting <laughs> uh, but that's that's not the sort of lifestyle I'm talking about really yeah. um and I think I can get past the jealousy part as long as it's like a part of our relationship from the beginning, I think. Mm -hmm. But this is going to depend on the woman. And yeah. like for me to even say the word relationship right now, like makes my tongue hurt. So I like <laughs> right. don't even want to. Yeah, talk. no, I feel you 100%. Yeah. Yeah. How is, and you don't have to talk about this if you don't want to, but how is your child doing with all of this? So I think she's the right age. Like it was, it was horrible when we told her. It was like mm -hmm. terrible. That was like wow. one of the worst moments in my life. Oh. And How old is she? She's seven. Yeah. She just turned seven. And you know, like we we both try to paint it as pretty as we can. 
Mm -hmm. um, and when we were amicable, which was like a week, uh, just over a week ago, it was easier <laughs> to do. My it was easier to play. Um, but like now, now there's just no contact. And I think that she sees that and she doesn't like it. And so I need to find a middle ground there, like, yeah. like for Violet, um, mm -hmm. so that she doesn't feel awkward with it. But I don't think she quite realizes what's happening. Like mm -hmm. she kind of does, but I don't think she knows that it's like, you know, she's like, I wish that you, I want you and mommy to both be at my horseback riding lessons. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, right. that's never going to happen again. You know, yeah. but like, but she still asks for that. And that's sad, but generally she's very happy girl. She lives a nice life. She has yeah. a good time. That's, that's important. You know, yeah. that's really good. Well, I think this brings us to a part of my podcast <laughs> 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 where we, um, answer listeners questions so this is actually not a listener's question this time this is one of my oh, questions <laughs> but um i think you're the perfect answer to this um if you were to date what would your ideal romantic dinner be like what would you cook because sometimes well does he want to cook though he, he cooks all day it's like a gynecologist you know like looking yeah, at exactly like a gynecologist yeah. you i'm want? glad you said like most people say like a painter or a <laughs> or a carpenter but you're like no, I mean, it's like it's really like he's a gynecologist you're off now like, don't ever date a guy a male gynecologist i mean i wouldn't want to date have you ever dated a male gynecologist I'm, I mean, they have to know their way around, like, you know. They're yeah, but I bet they're like, oh, another one? <laughs> I bet they're not. <laughs> I, bet, I bet they're not. You need to have one on the show. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Actually, yeah. Maya, like, when I was growing up, I had a male gynecologist, which is kind of weird, but oh, that is weird. he was, like, old as the day is long. I mean, he's probably dead now, but if he wasn't, I would love to get him on the spot. That would be funny. Remember, <laughs> you'd be like, remember me? Yeah. <laughs> what did I look like back when I was 13? Let's okay. <laughs> All right. Now I'm blushing. Uh, <laughs> the question was, the question was, what would I cook for a romantic meal? Or well, how about like or, what is the or, most romantic date? Or 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 I, I want to go on the food date. Or order, <laughs> like um, you know, it's, to me it would be more about like what restaurant was I going to? Okay. And I'm like I'm not like somebody who like goes for romantic stuff. Like I'm not I like, but I but I like the things I like often happen to be romantic. Mm. Like I like okay. really nice restaurants, really nice hotels. I like to be in really nice places. Oftentimes those things are romantic. Mm -hmm. um, and I try not to be sitting there with like a dude um, when I'm at those things, but I also <laughs> would. Um, <Amazing>. So like, <laughs> yeah, me and AJ having a nice romantic dinner. Uh, I can see it, honestly. You seem I mean, like a pretty good date. He's a good I listener. Would. Oh yeah, he's a totally good <laughs> listener. He really cares. He really thinks he's he really softy. Um, I think that there's this beautiful restaurant called Blue Hills at Stone Barns that's in Westchester, New York. It's one of my favorite restaurants in the world. And I think that, and then there's a beautiful little B&B &B there that's nice. And that's, to me, a nice night, you know? Um, and there are thousands of those <laughs> situations. Sure. Uh, but there's not like a go-to. And it sure as fuck isn't like cooking. Like, I don't like, I don't Do you, like you cook cooking. at all at home? Uh, no, not right now. I have like yeah. a, the I have a little apartment now. I went from my house to like a small apartment and my kitchen is sort of in my living room. Yeah. So I'm not like trying to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but I will, like I will. Um, I don't know. I just, like if somebody I care about asks me to, I will 100%. And mm -hmm. once I have the ability to cook outdoors here, which there are lots of opportunities to do that, yeah. I'll cook more like that kind of stuff. Like grilling. Um, like yeah, yeah. But that's not romantic, right? That's not like. I, big, I think big really, meat guy. I think really is romantic. Yeah. I mean, them. and I also like don't I like hate looking like I'm a hustler or like I'm trying too hard. You know what I mean? Like, like with the girls. So, yeah, like, yeah the like, oh, I'm a chef. Uh, yeah. <laughs> look at me. Look at me. Chef Tyler Anderson is cooking for you. You know, like fuck that. Yeah, it's stupid. I feel you. I feel you. Like that would be to me, that would be like date. I don't know. That would be like either a friend who's a really good friend or somebody who's like officially a girlfriend would, mm -hmm. would be yeah. like that sort of situation if that's mm -hmm. it I feel you. yeah what was the question again so it could be <laughs> either um what's your what would you what's your like ideal food 
on a date? I feel like that's a really weird question that I mean, might I be specific that, to you. I mean, I was I was literally going to a grocery store. I thought it was like food. What did you say? What's yours? Mine. Yeah. Okay. Um. Well, that's what I was trying to figure out. I was just. Honestly, it wasn't. Were you trying to cook a romantic meal? No, I was not trying to cook a romantic meal. I was trying to figure out what the fuck to cook. (laughs) And I was on my way to the grocery store and I had to figure it out because I have all these like go to recipes. But I get the problem with me, and this is totally an aside, is I just get like I cook the same thing over and over again and I get sick of it, but my boyfriend doesn't get sick of it. So then I like detest it after a while. (laughs) I can't, I can never make it again. Not going to read into that. So sure. (laughs) It gets fucked up. So I have to find something new. I went back to beef stew, which is totally not the right time of year for, but it tastes good. Who cares? Beef stew slaps. Yeah, it's it's good. I mean, I have a good recipe for it. And I'm not, I didn't eat it to the point of like throwing up. So that's good. Yeah. I don't know. For me, I, I think it's weird to have like a specific food that feels romantic I think it's more about like where you're eating what the environment is like what's the dynamic like what well, are we wearing like, I mean it's like I always wonder or think about sometimes what to order on a first date because I'm like okay I don't want to eat something that's gonna make me like messy messy feel bloated yeah yeah you know there's gonna be a happy ending <laughs> or, just know? always order just always order the most expensive thing yeah well, yeah that usually goes yeah. over very well yeah, actually like, i kind of do that anyway and then but you have to like look at the menu and be like hmm what's the right. most expensive thing Sorry, and then yeah, order that yeah that. <laughs> yeah i'm a high class girl no i i do i will say this though i like and it doesn't matter where you know you could be like at mcdonald's but like i like on a date like a splurge moment you know mm-hmm. like if we want that bottle of wine, let's get dessert. Like, let's just go for it. Let's just like <laughs> abandon all pretense. And it like it's not about the cost, but it's about just like fuck it. This bond the day. Yeah, yeah. And for me, that's what I think romance is. It's spontaneity. It's yeah, because plans is like fucking bullshit. Yeah. I mean, it's sweet it though too if you plan something really thoughtful and like romantic. Like, I think that can be. But it feels spontaneous to you still. Right. You know I mean? Right. Yeah. 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 It yeah. Like, if like, it's a surprise. Of, if you give me a Hallmark card, I'll like throw it back in your face. You know what I mean? What are you like a papyrus guy? I like hippopotamus. Hartford Prince, what's up? <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, and I like those. Um, those things. I don't know. I the pop-up that. cards. Yeah, those what are your words? What do you mean? They're That's so cheer Oh my god. Whatever. I like the ones that play music when you open them. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Or I like the giant one. <laughs> yeah, those are good. I like. I like to send people. Somebody those. loves you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what the fuck did you send me? Like my <laughs> mailbox is full. It's so cool that this guy I know had was like a. It was um a TV remote that was like this big. I mean, you can't see. That's smart. He, I know, right? Was he blind? Did it have no, a rail? It was just like one of those things probably get like at Spencer's or something. But it was like fucking genius. Because you, well, like, you don't lose it. control a yeah. smart TV? Do we have Netflix? Do we? I mean, this was way back. In right. Time, but yeah. Like, I don't think they make that shit up. No, they make it. You could fucking find it. I'm going to. I, I'm, I'm going to do it. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> so, well, anyways, everyone, thank you so much for watching the show. Um, Thank you, Tyler. For being on. Thanks, Thank you for having me on. And we will link all Tyler's information in the you know bylines of the episode. And till next time, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you so much for listening. You can catch a new episode of X Facts next week. Hit that follow button so you don't miss out on any of the action. We want to hear from you, so leave us a comment or review. Until next time, bye!